Hey, True Believers, England team here. So I've got a little good and bad about what's about to go on here. This is about RF Occult, and this is a companion piece to my Yellow Kid video that was released a couple of years ago, actually. I was using a different microphone, and it's not... it. So you could definitely hear the sound difference. Another thing is... I had a tendency to want to put music behind my voice, and I <laughs> was never good about mixing it, so there are times when the music is a little bit loud. I'm At this point, what I'm trying to do is get in front of the comment section, because I know that's going to be uh, a point with some people. Uh, otherwise, this is something I love doing. I lo That's why I love doing the First Appearance Fridays and everything. I like to talk about the history of comics. You know, It's a great hobby. And we focus on so much of what we don't like these days, especially what we don't like about the modern age, that it, we tend to forget that there's a whole bunch of stuff in the past that we made us fans. And it doesn't even have to be the distant past like this one. It's you know, It could be 10 years ago from, from this point. And that's why I wanted to promote this video, and I wanted to kind of get started back on the history of comics. Of course, once again... I've got to make sure that people are going to want to see any of it in, in the first place. Um, so if you do like this video, please share it, like it, leave a comment. All of that stuff it tells me that this is something I should continue. It, that, that's just the, the only real way to understand when you're doing this kind of thing. And I'm really hoping you guys respond positively. Anyway, once again, um, I apologize. This is a, a year old, I but uh, I, I know most of you haven't seen it, so I hope you guys enjoy. And for the patrons who uh, saw it last year, <laughs> I hope you enjoy it again. In my opinion, Richard F. Alcult is the grandfather of the modern co comic book. And I'll get to that in sections and situations. His big accomplishment was actually to be able to see the trobs and tribulations of New York City at the turn of the 20th century and present them in a way that was not only intelligent, but made people at the time laugh. And I say at the time only because he uses a language and a, a slang even that may seem alien to us just because slang and language changes over the years. He was born in Lancaster, Ohio on January 14, 1863. He entered the McKinnon University School of Design in Cincinnati in 1878. He studied for three years and at, when he left he had a job as a painter of pastoral scenes for the Hall Safe and Lock Company. So in 1888, there was a centennial exposition of the Ohio Valley and Middle Atlantic states. It was in Cincinnati. Edison Laboratories Electric Light and Display needed some illustrations and they hired a cult to do it. Now, the drawings, they weren't really needed, so he moved to New Jersey and that, that was where the headquarters were, and he became a full-time employee. In 1889, he was named the official artist for the Edison Traveling Exhibit, and he was sent to the World's Fair in Paris, where he continued his art studies in Paris's Latin Quarter. When Alcult returned to New York in 1890, he ended up getting a job with one of Edison's friends' magazines. There he would submit his own cartoons, but he also freelanced jokes and cartoons to some of the weekly humor magazines. And everything was well received, and he began to get more and more work, and his cartoons appeared more and more frequently, typically focusing on the poor, the blacks living in the imaginary town of Possumville, or the Irish tenement street children living in Hogan's Alley in New York. And these were not cartoons for children. Let's make no bones about it, kids. Back in the day, you had magazines for adults, and the cartoons were more adult humor oriented. And by the late 1894, Alt Cult began to submit to the New York world. At the time, it was the largest circulated newspaper in America. His first job there was as a technical artist drawing new technologies, but he still submitted to humor magazines as he did that job. The original Yellow Kid cartoons, he was actually just a side character. He was not the main character on these, and they were small. Just one panel with text below, there wasn't any word balloons to start. And 
the fact that they the started putting colors into the magazines, they gave him a yellow shirt. So naturally, the eye was drawn to him, and soon he became a popular character. And the cartoons that he was in began to mature, and in, in about a year, the yellow kid gained international fame. Enter William Randolph Hearst, who had heard about the Yellow Kid and understood that everybody in New York loved him. He hires Alt Cult away from the Pulitzer's world and gave him a much higher salary to draw the Yellow Kid for the journal. Now, here's where the problems come in. Uh, Pulitzer and Hearst said that they owned the Yellow Kid. Pulitzer because he was the publisher, Hearst because he was the creator, and both of them started drawing the comic in their respective newspapers. Now, there is no real court record about the copyright and who owned it, so for the longest while, there were two papers publishing The Yellow Kid at the same time. One was Pulitzer's World, which had Hogan's Alley, and then uh, Alt Cult just went and created a whole new neighborhood called McFadden's Flat. This started the phrase, the yellow papers, which, uh, the yellow kid papers, which soon became the yellow papers. And then after the Spanish-American War, the USS Maine got sunk and both papers started publishing sensationalist stories. And then it became yellow journalism. And that's why we have that phrase today about sensational journalism being called yellow journalism. When it comes right down to it, what R.F. Outcult did was create the very first comic superstar. Yes, it was a comic strip and only a comic book when somebody had the idea of folding it up and putting it in the Sunday papers as a supplement. But still, he taught people that comic book, comic strips excuse me, could sell newspapers as well as other merchandise. He got people interested. And without the yellow kid, ladies and gentlemen, there would be no Superman and we would have a very different hobby these days. So there you go, gang. Uh, actually, I listened to it again while, you know, just, just so I could comment on it. Um, it's funny, I'm commenting on my own video. <laughs> uh, I would not have ended it the same way if I were doing it today because I, I'm just not that guy anymore. I don't think in terms of, well, if this happened or if this didn't happen, that would because there's no telling what, what would have happened. Um, point being, though, is that because of Alcalt, Al it did reveal to the world that comic books were a viable uh, commodity. Now, maybe something else would have come along and done that. Maybe it would have been Superman. I don't know. It's just that, that that's the whole thing. It's, I, I made a correlation. Because this happened, that happened. And isn't that cool? And I wouldn't do that today. Otherwise, yeah, as much as the music gets a little bit loud, I was surprised it didn't bother me as much. This is the first time I re-listened to it. <laughs> Go figure. Um, so what did you think is... Oh, before we get to that, before I get to the ending here, I have lined up now, I'm starting to put together stuff to do uh, the Platinum Age. I've already done uh, the, the uh, Victorian Age of comic books in my history of comics, as well as my brother did uh, a video about Nemo, Little Nemo and Slumberland and such. So we've we've talked about things that happened before Superman. There's one more video I wanted to do, and it just kind of brings up all the famous comic strips and everything, including another out cult um, creation called Buster Brown. Uh, surprisingly enough, Mickey Mouse appeared before Superman in comic. It touches on the Platinum Age of comics, and I wanted to end it at 1935 because that's when Detective Comics number one came out. So anyway, if you like that kind of thing or you want to see that kind of thing, once again, I need the likes, I need the shares, I need the comments, comments, you know, because even if this video doesn't get a lot of views, at least the interaction will tell me that I'm on the right track. So by all means... As I usually say, if you have a comment on this video, please put it down in the comments section below. And if you like the video, click like, share it to get word out about the channel and to get word out about the video, really. Also, if you haven't done it already, hit subscribe and the notification bell. And if you don't mind supporting the channel, go on over to Patreon or to Ko-Fi. The links are in the description below. Drop a dollar in the till and uh, help us keep the lights on at the house and 
helps keep making videos for you. I'd like to thank everybody who's already done that, and to everyone, all of the true believers, thank you very, very much for watching.